This is Made for More Living with Johnny Jennings, powered by EXP Realty. Online at madeformoreliving.com. Is your neighbor's house sitting on the market? Is it at a for sale sign in the front yard forever? Or maybe you're thinking about selling. You're worried the same thing is going to happen to your home. Or maybe your home is sitting on the market and you're like, why is my home not selling? Matt, I was literally talking with somebody yesterday who was saying, hey, I'm, I've been burned by real estate agents. I don't want to work with real estate agents. I don't think you guys do a good job. The last real estate agent listed my home for six months. We only had 15 people through the house. Mm. So why would I, why would I want to work with you? You know, this is probably one of the most common questions I get about. Why is it one of the most common questions? Because it happens a lot? Because a lot of people go through it. Yeah. Mm. Even in today's market, even in, even in 2021, when, when, you know, you could list anything and it would, it felt like you could list anything and it would sell. There were still homes that did not achieve a successful sale. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of homeowners probably are considering a, a, a number of different things. Is it just the economy? Are homes selling at all? Maybe it's not just my home. Maybe all of Sac- nobody's selling their home in mm. Sacramento. Or they think maybe it's priced incorrectly. It's priced poorly. And nobody's coming to see the house because it's just priced wrong. Or maybe they think the real the realtor is not doing enough job in marketing and promoting the home, or maybe there's some kind of feature in the home that they is is unattractive or it's just pushing people away. I will you know? say, I will say, most of the time when I have these conversations, at least they're not saying the real estate agent did everything they could have done, right? That, that's not their perspective, right? And they also believe that their home is probably price correctly. So oftentimes the blame the blame lies on the real So there could be a lot of issues though, but you yeah. think one of the majority of issues that you see is that the realtor is not doing a good enough job as they could be doing? Uh yeah, without a doubt. So the, so there's two I definitely think price at the end of the day you can have a home priced correctly and with decent marketing, not even top tier marketing, but at least like really good marketing, um the home will sell. Okay, but what unfortunately what most real estate agents do is we is the three P's. Have you heard this no, joke I before? So the three P's include they put a sign in the yard, they put it in the MLS, and then they pray that the home sells. <laughs> okay. Those are, that's that's their marketing plan. The three P's. Okay, and, and so you say that just doesn't work. So that that can work, but it doesn't necessarily net the client the most amount of money, mm. right? Which is ultimately what most. I mean, unless a seller is like, "Hey, I am going through a divorce. We just need to sell this as quickly as possible," or "Hey, I need to be across the country for a new job, and I need this money to make that that new job work. Let's sell it as quickly as possible." Or "I'm about to lose my home to the bank. I want to. I want to. I just want to get some money out of this so I can move on with my next." the next phase of my life as quickly as possible. If speed's a factor, then typically the client is not looking to net the most. But most of the time, the majority of the time, people are looking to make the most off of that sale as they possibly can. And so, unfortunately, a lot of agents use the three Ps, right? That's it. They may not even do the third P. They may not even pray, right? right? They may only do the first two where they put a sign in the yard and put it in the MLS. But what top producing teams do, what our team does, is we go above and beyond those three Ps. So what I, if you're interviewing agents, what I would ask them, the first thing I would do, even before you call somebody, is Google them. Google, do they even have a Google website? Like I was, I was talking with another fellow yesterday up in Grass Valley, and he's like, yeah, I, I, I interviewed this person, I interviewed this person, and I'm interviewing you. I said, great. And then um, later I looked up who I was up against. I was curious, okay, well, I hadn't heard these names before. And I, one of them didn't even have a Google presence. So to me, that just says they're not keeping up with the times. Google is absolutely critical if you're a real estate agent because all roads lead to Google. They may start at Zillow, but then somebody's going to go to Google and Google you, right? All roads eventually lead through Google. And so if your agent doesn't even have a Google profile, that's a red flag. So not only do we have a Google profile, but we have the most Google reviews out of any brokerage or team in the area. We have more more reviews and a, and a higher review rating than anybody. So I would encourage you to at least review your agent and see what kind of reviews they have. So that's that's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do is ask them what's their marketing plan. Okay. So we have a Bay Area buyer marketing plan where we actually through geo targeting and uh, geo fencing and retargeting, we're actually able to identify people looking to make a move to the Sacramento market. And that that buyer population moving from the Bay represents somewhere between 15 to 17% of the buyer pool on average, almost one in five, 
right? And so if you're not marketing to those people, then you're you're potentially leaving money on the table because they're selling a home that's a fraction the size of our homes out here for right. many multiples. Right. And then um, another thing that your agent should be doing is they should be doing what's called proactive marketing. So are they doing postcard drops through the neighborhood? Are they proactively calling through the neighborhood and letting letting your neighbors know that your home is on the market? Because they may live two streets over and they may have a friend or family member that's looking to move to the community, mm. but they're not going to drive down your street. They're not looking at what home, what homes are on the market on Zillow, right? But if they receive a postcard or a phone call saying, hey, the, your neighbor two streets over just listed their home. Do you happen to know anybody considering um, making a move to the, to the neighborhood? You're potentially leaving money on the table. And so, and then also just make sure that they have a, a, a buyer um, a buyer pool. So we have over 15,000, 1,000, 15,000 people in our buyer pool. These were hand raisers who said, hey, we're interested in making a move. And for some reason or another, they haven't made that move yet. The timing may not have been right. The financing may not have been right. Whatever it is. So what we will do is we will proactively reach out to that buyer pool that we have exclusive to us and market, and market our client's home. On top of that, we do a whole bunch of other stuff, but those are just some of the things that we're doing that go be above and beyond the three Ps. So if your home isn't selling, ask your real estate agent, what exactly are they doing to market, to market your property? And if they don't have good answers for that, is it okay for someone who has uh, put their home on the market and they've listed with one agent, are they able to break that relationship and you know, reach out to you guys that made for more living? Can they reach out to Johnny Jennings and say, hey, I'm not happy with my current realtor. He just doesn't seem like he's doing a good enough job. My home's been on the market since September yeah. and we've only had 10 people come by to look at the house and I'm not getting any emails or calls. You know, I just leave a message oh, with my realtor, yeah. you know, and I think that's a big important that's issue, right? Flag. You gotta have connection. It's not like you said, do the three Ps and I never hear from my agent until we get an offer. Yeah. Like it seems like from my perspective, there should be constant communication Absolutely. What's going on, you know? And so, you know, is it taboo to like break relationship with your current agent? Is there like certain paperwork that has to be done if they want to, you know, they've been hearing about Johnny Jennings and made for more living team. And it's like, okay, you guys sound great. Am I allowed to do that? Yeah. So real quick, I want to touch on the lack of communication thing. That is a huge red flag. If you're in a buyer transaction and you're, you know, you're purchasing a home or you're a seller and you're selling a home, and you are not hearing from your realtor, like proactively, if they are not anticipating your requests, then, and if they're, if they're not anticipating your request, that's, that's a yellow flag. If they're not getting back to you at all, that is a huge red flag. Because what's happening behind the scenes is they're trying to find the answers. They're trying to solve a problem, and they want to come to you with a solution tailor-made and with a bow on it, but they haven't come to that solution yet. So if your agent is avoiding you, massive, massive, massive red flag. So to your question about if you're not happy with your current realtor, what, what should you do? The first thing I would recommend is every real estate agent has a different policy about this. It's not, there's not an industry standard, but reach out to them and let them know what your concerns are and, and have a conversation because maybe they are doing a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe they, everything is great mm. and they just, that's just how they operate. And so have a conversation with them, make sure that everything's okay. And then if the pro and then express your, your desire to have more reliable communication, what, get more people through the home in a specific timeline, like, like show me what you're doing for me. So at least have a conversation with the agent. And then if that doesn't work, then you're going to have to review whatever the paperwork is that you signed with them. Some people like, uh, will, will let you out free and clear. Like, Hey, I, I, I like, for example, the made for more team. We do not lock people into contracts. If at any point you say, hey, this isn't working out, I'm not happy, I don't want to sell my home, I don't think you're doing a good enough job for me, you said X, you said you would do Y and you haven't done it, then, then by all means, like if we're not earning your business, we will rip up the contract and part as friends. Yeah. Some, a lot, some agents provide that. Most agents, however, will sign a cancellation, they'll let you out of the agreement with them, but then there's like a, a 60, 90, 120 day clause in there where they check a box and that says, hey, if the home sells within that period of time, then you're going to owe them a commission. Mm, wow. So just make sure that that whatever you, it would, so have the conversation and then if you think you've canceled, make sure before you sign it that you're, you don't owe that agent anything after that point. And then after that, after you've signed the cancellation, everything's good, then you should reach out to another agent to Like to Johnny interview. Jennings and Made for More Living, right? Yeah, yeah. You can certainly reach out to us, but we're not allowed to talk with you if you are in a contract, a listing, if you've signed a listing agreement and are still in contract with somebody else. We, right. Not only are we not allowed to do it, we won't talk to you. 
Okay, because we because that's this is our livelihood, and we don't want to lose our sure, license. Sure, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and you want to be respectful because you work with a lot of these agents. Exactly. They could be representing buyers, and so I I hear that a lot. You know that there's, you know, realtors have this camaraderie with each other because you all relate to the struggle and the challenge and the successes and and you're out there for each other you want to support and help everyone and that's why you guys put the call out for other realtors that are out there if they're struggling yeah. and you want to be on a team that's going to be supportive and helpful and give you all the tools that you need and has a data list of of current ready to buy clients and you know you guys are a great team and you're there for any agents that are listening that want to be part of a great team and real quickly before we go to the break so if someone's listening right now and they have their home on the market or they're thinking about putting their home on the market, what's a realistic expectation right now of how long the home should be on the market? Like if they listed in September and here it is, you know, the spring, um, you know, is that too long? What, what's some realistic <laughs> expectations that people should have for how long their home should be on the market right now? Yeah, we get that question quite frequently. And, it, and the, the honest answer is it really depends. It really depends. So I was on a listing appointment yesterday in Grass Valley. This home was almost 4,000 square feet, um, about two and a half acres, way, I, I say Grass Valley, it was way out in the middle of nowhere. That home is going to sit on the, on the market longer than a home in Roseville cookie cutter, three to $450,000. So it really depends. And your agent that you're interviewing should be able to bring you that market data. And they should be able to explain to you, hey, here's the average for the zip code. Here's the average for for, um, for properties like mine. So that way the expectations are set. So, because when you're selling a home, it is it is incredibly stressful. And every time I leave I, I leave a house, I just leave leave sellers with a with a word of encouragement. And that word of encouragement, you can just almost see like just melt away melt mm -hmm. away stress. And the reason why is because like let's say the homes are selling white hot like. 10 days, you get, an, you get an offer on your property on average for a home like yours, okay? That's still nine nights that you went to bed after the home went on the market wondering, why is my home not sold? Why do people not like my house? How much longer am I going to do, do, do this? What, what, what is my home going to sell for? Is it going to sell for more or is it going to sell for less? That's nine nights, and that's in a, in a very competitive neighborhood, okay? And so... Um, as far as if your home's been on the market since September, I've done listing appointments. We've sold houses in recently in Elk Grove, Rancho Cordova, Sacramento, Roseville, Rockland, Folsom, El Dorado Hills, um, Placerville, Pollock Pines, Grass Valley, like, uh, Emigrant Gap. Like we've all kinds of different markets, and I am not seeing them on average take longer than if it, if it's priced correctly and if the marketing's done correctly, longer than sixty days. Mm. So if you if you're beyond that 60 day mark, then something something needs to be looked at. Mm. And before we go to break, what you said you you try to give them some encouragement. What's that encouragement that you usually give them before leaving the appointment so that they feel good, you know, going to bed day after day without getting an offer? So this is this is something this is super this is super uh you may not think it's super ninja, but I have done it. Like, uh, hey, if it works, it works. I've you know? said it dozens and dozens of times, and I actually picked it up from my business partner, Tom Daves. He's the one that taught me this this line. And it, when I'm leaving, I just say, "Hey, this home will sell. This home will sell." Mm. And then you just see like the stress melt away because honestly, that's their number one concern. Yeah. And some people are like, "Yeah, it will sell, but for her, but for how much?" And I'm like, "I don't know, but we net our clients more than the average realtor, so." You're going to get more with us and with somebody else. So, but if, if you're, if you're just a good real estate agent, we'll sell your home. Mm, you know, yeah. they'll go with that. They'll, they'll cover that last mile. I think a lot of people want to hear that, you know, just oh, trust doubt. us, you know, don't fear it will sell. You know, I have a listing you, coming you up. know that I have a listing coming up in Kelsey and the, uh, the seller called me a couple days after the appointment and said, Hey, I've thought it over. You know, you're really great, but you know why I'm going with you is because just you were so confident that you could sell this home. Like you said, this home will sell, and I believe you meant it. Mm, and, um, and we are in the business, yeah. All right, more to come. Stick around. And hey, if you're brand new to real estate, or maybe you've been doing it for decades, but you're struggling every single month, maybe you're thinking about jumping into this amazing career, but you want to make sure that you're part of a team that's going to take you to the next level, Reach out to Johnny Jennings and have a discussion with him. Find out about all the resources that he provides along with EXP Realty. Reach out to made the number four living.com, made the number four living.com, and find out how to be a part of Johnny Jennings and EXP Realty.